June 9, 1948, at 10 in the morning, WBZ-TV was on the air with what was to be the staple of our programming day, the test pattern. At 6.30, the moment we've been waiting for, WBZ-TV went on the air with New England's first regularly scheduled programming, a film of prominent New Englanders wishing us well. The Honorable James M. Curley, Mayor of the City of Boston. In the past quarter of a century, the two most important contributions to the happiness, peace of mind, content of the American people have unquestionably been the Ford car and the radio. Today, a third contribution, perhaps equaling in value either of the previous two, is going to become a part of the life of the American people, namely television. Congratulations, station WBZ-TV, for inaugurating the service of television in this area to all of us. It will be a happy medium for pleasant and profitable activities. With this new instrumentality of television, we all will be able to see and to be inspired by the great teachers of religion all throughout the world, giving the contagion of their personal examples for the good life. I join with all of my friends and with my colleagues particularly on this first broadcast in the prayer that this new invention of human genius shall be used for the blessing of all and the hurt of none, for the joy of all and the woe of none. This so, film, made several days before the, the broadcast, was beyond. followed by a live telecast of Governor Bradford from our old studios because our new broadcast center wasn't exactly finished. Community. Arch uh, McDonald, who did the news that first night, remembers. Wow. We were preparing for the news. These saws were going and the hammers were pounding. All of a sudden, uh, we realized it was time for news. So I screamed and hollered for quiet, quiet on the set. Yeah, real big stuff. And so everybody stopped hammering. Everybody stopped uh, sawing. And uh, we didn't have any furniture. There wasn't any furniture in the building because uh, they were still constructing the place. So no, we had a piece of plywood, and I sat on a keg of nails, and that's how the, how the station got on the air. It wasn't until several weeks later that WBZ Radio and TV moved out of the Hotel Bradford and into the new broadcast center. It was the finest facility of its kind just about anywhere. Ultra-modern was the word for the seven spacious studios. There were four cameras, a special projector for broadcasting films, the latest equipment for the finest quality pictures, and then there was our sleek mobile van, completely fitted out for remote telecasts by microwave. Just about everyone loved TV. Uh, that is, everyone who had a TV. With only 2,300 TV sets to receive us when we first went on the air, getting more sets out and around became a big priority. There was the inevitable contest. Huge crowds at Mechanics Hall watched breathlessly as an 18-year-old ballerina from Brookline, Massachusetts, won the title of Miss Television. Phyllis Pond Mayer remembers. Not only did I win the contest, which was the start of my career, but I also won the first television set in Boston, which made me very, very popular. So all the neighbors used to come over every night and watch our TV set. It was a very unique experience for them because most of them didn't own one and had never seen it. For the rest of us, all those ads in the papers were pretty hard to resist. We were promised the world right in our living rooms carefully concealed in a piece of elegant furniture. The screen was a little small and the price was a little high, but that didn't stop New England's love affair with TV. Everyone wanted to see Uncle Milty live from New York and to see their own friends and neighbors on a new show called Community Auditions, live from Soldiers Field Road. In the fall of 48, Gillette put 100 TV sets out in the Boston Public Garden so 10,000 fans could see the Braves in the series on WBZ TV. If anything sold TV to New England, it was sports. If you couldn't get to your college football game, WBZ TV brought it to you. And if you couldn't get out to the baseball game, well, just imagine, right in your own living room, the splendid splitter himself. 
In those early days, practically everything was a TV first. Way back in 48, NBC gave us our first look at a political convention, live from Philadelphia. WBZ-TV gave NBC a first in 1949, live from Boston Garden, Winston Churchill's first television appearance, filmed at the same time by cameramen from the Massachusetts United Institute of Technology, on whose behalf he was secure. speaking. Let us then move forward together in discharge of our mission and our duty, fearing God and nothing else. Two months later, another first, WBZ-TV's first birthday. And by now, there were 50,000 TV sets in Greater Boston alone, and WBZ-TV was on its way to becoming part of every New England family. <laughs> 